already altering the state of climate change could be about climate change. Sea levels already rising So the world is kind of a hot mess right now. Uh, because of climate change, among other things. We've been protesting, we've been calling for change, and certainly a lot of change has happened recently, but not enough change has happened, and it's not happening quick enough. Some of the means we're gonna have to use to fight climate change are cheats, and among these is BEX, or bioenergy with carbon capture and storage. We're gonna show you how it works, why it matters, what the challenges are, and what are some solutions to those challenges. This presentation was brought to you by a bunch of students from Bocconi. Essentially, BEX is the combination of two existing technologies, bioenergy and carbon capture and storage. Let's dive into each one real quick to see how it works. Bioenergy is a way to produce power, similarly to burning oil or coal or gas. Except with bioenergy, we're not using any fossil fuels. The fuel we burn instead is biomass, which is basically plants or anything organic that you can collect or regrow fast. The advantage of using bioenergy is that all the carbon that you admit into the atmosphere by burning the grass is then reabsorbed back into the cycle when the grass regrows. This basically makes bioenergy a carbon neutral way to produce energy. Some examples of biomass fuels include municipal and industrial waste or manure or crops like corn or even just grass. Now carbon capture and storage is a completely different technology that was actually invented by the oil industry itself. Okay, so let's say you drill for some oil underground and then you send it to a power plant to produce energy. By burning the oil, you're emitting all this CO2 into the atmosphere. And that's where CCS comes in. It's basically a way to avoid that. You can install CCS technology at the emissions point of your power plant. Then it captures the carbon out of the air and compresses it and finally puts it right back into the geological formations where you can find fossil fuels. So now, instead of putting the carbon in the atmosphere, you've sequestered it underground and removed it from the carbon cycle. Now this is the beauty of BEX. If you combine a bioenergy way of producing power with a way to capture and store carbon, theoretically you'd end up with a carbon negative way of producing energy. Now that's a big deal. Let me compare this to other ways of producing power. Here in blue, we have the atmosphere. And in brown, you have the ground, places where carbon is sequestered. Today, we mostly produce energy by burning fossil fuels. So we're extracting carbon from the soil and introducing it into the carbon cycle. That's our problem. Fossil fuels with CCS is what we saw before, and that both extracts carbon from the soil and for the most part, sequesters it back into the ground. With renewable technology like wind or solar power, you're not extracting or removing any carbon from the cycle. With bioenergy, as we saw, you emit carbon into the atmosphere, but the biomass locks it back in when it grows back, so it's like a cycle. But the opportunity with BEX is that not only do you have the cycle in bioenergy, but you're also sequestering carbon underground. Now let's see why this matters. The IPCC, or Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, is a United Nations body dedicated to providing scientific facts about climate change. One of their super important activities is producing a summary for policymakers, which can help decision makers by giving them scientific and economic projections on climate change. This is one of the summaries from a few years ago. BEX is included in all these projections as an important mitigation strategy. However, the IPCC also warns us of some challenges and risks with BEX. We'll separate them into two groups, issues with bioenergy and issues with CCS. Let's look at CCS challenges. A big one is leaks. A central idea behind CCS is storage or sequestration underground. Usually, the carbon is injected into geological formations where there was natural gas or water or oil before. The problem is, these are natural formations and there could be leaks we don't know about. And even worse, a disruptive event like an earthquake could create a major breach and asphyxiate life forms near the leak. A second major problem with CCS as it stands today is the cost. Capturing and storing one ton of carbon today cost $130. That may not sound like that much, but when you multiply it by the 43 billion tons of carbon emitted by human activities just last year in 2019, we're talking $5.5 trillion per year. That's like twice the GDP of France. However, the IPCC has said that with further research and development, the cost of CCS would go down considerably in the next 50 years. Moving on to challenges with bioenergy. Depending on which form of biomass you choose as fuel, you'll have different issues with bioenergy. As we saw, in bio energy, we burn biomass to create power. There are two main categories of biomass. On one hand, you have waste, so municipal waste, manure, or even industrial waste. On the other hand, there's the biomass that you can grow yourself, like crops or trees or grass. Now here's the problem with waste forms of biomass. Let's say you have a city. Mm, okay, there, there you go, more or less. And you build the bioenergy plant here. 
Now, you have to collect waste from all these different factories and houses. You're gonna have to use a network of trucks to collect all that organic trash across the city. All that costs energy, so the transportation of your biomass will generate its own emissions. Okay, so why don't you just put your bioenergy plant in the middle of the field and collect your own biomass all on site? Sure, that would definitely work, but on a small scale. If you wanted to produce a lot of energy like this, you'd need a lot of fields. Now, what many climatologists hope to do with BEX is compensate for many of our past and present emissions to suck them out of the air and put them into the ground. But if you were to do this on the scale needed to compensate for our emissions, that would require a huge change in land use. To reach the goals of the Paris Agreement, you'd need a land area the size of India, or according to some estimates, twice the amount currently used for global agriculture. This has a lot of impacts on the world as we know it. Today, land is used for forests or marshes that provide important ecosystem services, or cropland for sustenance farmers or the food industry. Using bioenergy at a large scale would compete with other land uses and would demand huge plantations across the world. And this has many effects beyond land use, like an increase in water usage and more fertilizer in the soil, a loss of biodiversity, a hike in land prices and in food prices, and ultimately, in terms of who it affects, a potential rise in social inequality. This brings us to our very last challenge with BEX. Bioengineering with carbon capture and storage is a form of what we call geoengineering, which means changing the earth. Ideas like this include taking atmospheric carbon and putting it into the ground or reflecting sun rays with giant space mirrors. Yeah, that's a real idea. These are all more or less feasible mitigation ideas. They compensate for past emissions and sectors that would be really expensive to decarbonize. However, they can't be the only solution. The main challenge with BEX may be just inertia. We can't rely on a technology like BEX to save us from climate change without adapting our behavior. Real adaptation to climate change means reforesting and changing our consumption patterns, ending our reliance on fossil fuels and transitioning to cleaner energy. So here's what you should remember about BEX. It's a carbon negative way of producing energy, which is very cool. It's still expensive and needs some development. Because of land use, building bioenergy plants is better on a limited scale to minimize impact. All in all, we can expect BEX to play an important role in mitigating global emissions. But BEX should be paired with policies phasing out fossil fuels. Thanks for listening, and we hope you learned something.